In this last section, 12.5, we are just going to touch on and introduce a concept that many of you will dig into a lot more when you get into statistics, and that is the idea of the normal curved. Lots of data adheres to the normal curve when you have large samples. Also, data can be what's called normalized and uh, created to represent a normal curve. So nice thing about the normal curve, notice, is it is symmetric. It's symmetric right about this middle line right here, which I'm trying to draw as straight as I can, so apologize for that. So notice, because the normal curve, if I fold it along that line, 50% of the data lies below that, that middle line, and 50% of the data lies above. The interesting thing is that that value, this x value, is the mean. It's also the median because it represents the halfway point. And since it is the tallest point on the curve, it represents the mode. So for the normal curve, the mean, the median, and the mode all have the same x value. There's more very cool properties of the normal curve, and one of them is called the empirical rule. So again, I'm going to draw my middle line of symmetry that represents the mean. Okay, so I'm just going to write that, that this represents the mean. And notice there's some markings below the normal curve, and what those are called, and in statistics you will learn more about this, those are called the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a way that we measure how spread out data is. And we're not really going to talk too much about it in this class. But here's what you do need to know about the, the normal curve and the empirical rule. Is that if I go one standard deviation, so I'm going to change my pen color here, so forgive me for that, I'm going to make it red. And if I go one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean, the interesting thing about the normal curve, and all normal curves, no matter how spread out or clumped together they are, is that 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. I can go a little further. I'm going to change my pen color again. If I go two standard deviations of the mean, so I go one, two standard deviations below the mean, and I go two standard deviations above the mean, for any normal curve, no matter what, 95% of the data falls underneath the curve between those two standard deviations. And last but not least, if I was to go three standard deviations below and above, so I hop down here three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above, then Almost all the data, 99.7% of all data values, fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So it would be a rare event for something to be outside of three standard deviations. So here's a quick application of that. Heights for females that are in the same age range are normally distributed. In a random sample of 500 females, Determine the approximate number you would expect to have a height. And the first thing we're going to do is within one standard deviation of the mean. So according to the empirical rule, which we just saw on the previous page, okay, I'm going to flip back to that, 68%, the value in red of data values, fall within one standard deviation of the mean. So 68% is 0.68. And so that means 68% of the 500 data values that I have are going to be, I would expect, within one standard deviation of the mean. And so that means that 340 women would have a height within one standard deviation of the mean. So similarly, how many women would be within two standard deviations of the mean? Well, according to the green uh, lines that I drew here, according to the empirical rule, 95% of data values fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So that's 0.95 times the 500. And when I throw that into my calculator, that is going to give me 475 women is what I would expect 
to be within two standard deviations of the mean. Enjoy your homework. Talk to you soon.